they are closer now than they were five years ago. And I expect they will be closer in five months than they are today, absent uh, a global effort to push back against them. That is, each test, successful or unsuccessful as defined in the West, uh, continues to develop Kim Jong-un and his engineers and scientists' knowledge base. Uh, they, uh, they are intent upon completing that whole chain of activity. And it is the case that they are close enough now in their capabilities that from a U.S. policy perspective, uh, uh, we ought to behave as if we are on the cusp of them achieving that objective. We talk an awful lot about uh, missile systems that can reach Denver and Los Angeles and New York, uh, but there are enormous U.S. interests in South Korea, in Japan, and in Asia as well. Right. And so um, we shouldn't just focus solely on this ICBM threat, but the enormous conventional weapon systems that are in the hands of this man and the other elements of their nuclear program and other delivery technologies of those nuclear weapon systems. It seems that the world is stunned that the Russians are trying to, to poke their hand into U.S. elections and policy. This, this is not a new phenomenon. The technology is different. The tools that they use are different. Uh, but this was a threat in 2016. It will be a threat in the midterm elections in 2018. It will be a threat in 2020. Until there's a new leader in Russia, I suspect it will be a threat to the United States for an awfully long time. All of USG, all of the United States government has an obligation to understand that. That's our primary task. And to deliver that understanding to the President of the United States and the team. And then for us to find ways to push back against it. And we're intent on doing it. We have a lot of resources devoted to that. And I'm optimistic that we will continue to reduce the capacity of anyone, the Chinese, the Iranians, Al-Qaeda, WikiLeaks, and the Russians from impacting our election.